Welcome to the third module, where we'll explore laying out the factory in 3D. In this module, you'll see just how easy the factory design utilities make it when we work in 3D space. We'll first explore the general factory tools that are inside of Inventor, such as layers and working with the asset library. Then we'll look at the scenario where you have 3D models maybe that you want to use, but you don't want to publish them into the library. And then finally, we'll publish a simple model to the asset library, put it into our layout, and see how it affects our synchronization between AutoCAD, Navisworks, and Inventor. By the end of this clip, we'll have the equipment laid out in the two offices, as well as a few additional assets spread throughout the factory. In the demonstration, we'll start by opening the Inventor file, and we'll see how Inventor is smart enough to know it needs to update any changes from the AutoCAD file. After we're up to date, we'll see how easy it is to turn AutoCAD layers on and off when you're inside of Inventor, and we'll also see how the factory-related layers work. Then we'll open the Asset Browser, which is similar in appearance to the AutoCAD Asset Browser, and we'll start placing assets in our 3D space. This will also give us an opportunity to see how we can change factory properties and see the 3D models update in real time. So let's jump over to Inventor, now before we open the file, it's important that our project file is set properly. If you don't have the plural site underscore factory project active, click on the projects button and pick it from the list of available projects. If it doesn't appear on the list, then click the browse button and then navigate to its location and select it. Once the project file is properly set, go ahead and open up the plural site underscore factory model. A pop-up will come up asking if you'd like to update the Inventor file from the DWG file. Now it's always good practice to do this each time you open it, but if you hit cancel, it won't run the update and it will still let you open the Inventor file and make changes. We're going to go ahead and hit OK, and then we'll skip ahead to where it's completed, which is about a minute and a half later. Now this is what our layout looks like in 3D. Notice you can see the outline of the building, which will help us when we place some of the assets, especially when we get to the offices. We can also see all the AutoCAD 2D blocks because our DWG file is actually an underlay. This means it sits underneath all of our models and it acts as a guide for where the parts and the components are actually placed. In the model browser, you'll see the DWG file and if you right click it, you have a few options. The only one we'll worry about right now is the layer settings option. When we select it, we are shown all the layers that exist inside of the AutoCAD file. Notice that if we turn off any of the layers, they get hidden inside our graphics window. This provides a simple way to reduce any clutter if we're working with DWG files that are really busy. Now across the top, we also have a layer manager inside of Inventor. It's important to note that this layer manager only works for factory assets from the library. No other Inventor models will work with the layer functionality. We'll go ahead and create three layers, one representing the welding area, one representing the mitering station, and the third representing the debris station. We'll then select the corresponding models that go with each and apply them to the corresponding layers. Now when inside Inventor, it's important to note that you must hold down the control button to select multiple objects. With the models associated with their corresponding layers, notice how we can quickly toggle on and off the visibility of each layer. In addition, we can assign colors to individual layers, and by clicking on the Apply Color to 3D option, we can override the color of their appearance. In a large layout, this would be an effective way to categorize different sections of the model and make different types of objects easily distinguishable. Now to give ourselves more graphic space, we'll go ahead and close our model browser, and then in the factory menu, we'll open our assets browser. Just like in AutoCAD, we have the search bar and we have the folder structure, and both applications share the same library. We'll search for a forklift and then drag and drop it into our model. After I release the mouse button, I haven't yet placed it until I click again. After the first click, a triad appears on my model, letting me translate or rotate along any axis. We'll select the blue axis so we can rotate this 180 degrees, and then we'll right-click and select Done. 
Notice it now allows me to place another copy of that asset, so I need to right click again and select done again to finish the command. We'll now move to the other side of the factory and place a pallet truck. After locating it in my browser, we'll place it with the orientation as is. If I don't want to keep right clicking to complete the placement each time I put an asset into my layout, I can always go to my factory options, click on the assets tab, and enable the option to finish the command after placing one component. We'll now go ahead and add a weight checking machine and we'll put that right outside of the QA office and we'll go ahead and keep that in its default orientation. Now we'll start to populate our supervisor's office. First, we'll place a bookshelf that's in the library and so we'll go ahead and do a search for IKEA. We want the bookshelf that has the cabinet doors on the bottom now after inserting this asset, we'll go ahead and rotate it so that we can put it along the bottom wall next to the window. And then we'll go ahead and click in the XY plane in the triad. And this lets us move our asset in both the X and Y direction simultaneously, which will let me put it real quickly in the lower corner of our office. Then we'll go ahead and place a filing cabinet. and. As we place the filing cabinet, we'll look at a quick 3D view to make sure that the drawers aren't facing the wall. That'd be pretty important so we can open them. And then we'll go ahead and go back to our top view and put it right next to the door. Next, we'll place a shop floor display board. And after we place it in the proper orientation and location, we can notice here it's a little bit too long and it interferes with our doorway. Just like in AutoCAD, we have access to all the factory properties that allow us to modify our assets. And so we'll go ahead and reduce the length from 96 inches down to 72 inches. We can see our 3D model update in real time to reflect this new length. And so we'll go ahead now and move it back up into the corner. Now for the quality inspection room, we won't need to modify any assets. We'll just quickly place three pieces of equipment. We'll start by placing a 2D vision measurement machine and we'll go ahead and put it in the upper right corner of our room. We'll then go ahead and add a coordinate measuring machine and we'll rotate this a little bit and then go ahead and put it in the lower right corner of the room. Notice I can just drag the assets around freely inside of Inventor and that lets me make real quick changes of its location if I need to. Finally, we'll add a generic tool table to the room and we'll go ahead and put that right between the vision measurement machine and the door. Now let's go ahead and save our file and let's see what this looks like inside of AutoCAD. First, notice that the new layers we created for the welding area, the mitering station, and the debris station now appear in the layers list and that the corresponding objects appear in the color that we designated for the layer. Also, notice that it has automatically inserted blocks for each of the new assets that we placed, such as these that are located in the two offices. Let's now see what this looks like inside of Navisworks. When we go from AutoCAD straight into Navisworks, all the new assets appear where we put them. That's because everything we inserted into our layout was from the asset library. In the next module, we'll go back to the Inventor layout and we'll add some 3D models that are not from the asset library.